Hi there everybody, just like to introduce myself as Mark Butler. I'm the head of PE at Cold Juice School. Uh, I'm going to talk to you in this cast about A-level physical education in Cold Juice 6 form. So one of the first questions that students and parents ask, often ask is how are you going to be assessed at A-level PE? Um, there's quite a lot to it and we talk about the NEA part and then the examined part basically. So in terms of the uh, the non examined stuff, we've obviously got the practical performances. At GCSEP, the students were used to being assessed in three different activities from different activity tables. When we get into A-level, that narrows down just to one. Now, the students can either be assessed as a performer or as a coach. And depending on the standard that they play, that obviously affects the, the outcome that they get at the end. The more they play, the more they train, um, then the better their marks often are. There's also another part of the non-exams stuff which is called the EPIP speech which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about later on in the screencast where the students have to talk about a live performance at the observe applying theory elements from the course in terms of the examination papers we run a linear course over two years so there's no AS assessment um, the students are assessed at the end of the course in three different examination papers which I'll break down for you again shortly and there's a really wide range of question types within those papers the start of the questions are short answer questions and as they get further on through the papers they start going to the extended responses which could be from 10 to 20 marks um, there's obviously an opportunity, as I mentioned before, for the students to demonstrate their knowledge of the theory of performance um, through the examinations and the EPIP speech as well. So one of the first modules that the students study, and a large proportion of Year 12 is spent studying this one, it's called Physiological Studies. Um, it's by far the biggest module and it's really wide ranging. They start off by looking at applied anatomy and physiology. They've studied the skeleton and the cardio and respiratory systems as well as the muscular system of GCSEPE and they extend their knowledge here, um, going into it in a lot more detail. From there, in year 12, they move to this element called biomechanics, where they apply Newton's laws um, to sports situations basically. So there's quite a lot of application of maths within the biomechanics section. As the students move through year 12 more into year 13 within this module there's also an opportunity to look at exercise physiology. For example the students might look at the free energy systems that are used for different types of activities and then they start to look at injuries and injury rehabilitation towards the end. This question um, well, this module is basically examined with a two hour exam, okay? And it counts towards 30% of the final course. The second unit is called Psychological Studies. And again, students study this through year 12 and through year 13. It tends to take about an hour each week to get through it. Um, again, it's a wide ranging module the students start off by looking at how skills are, uh, are required they've been studying um, skill continuums at GCSEPE for example and they extend their studies again instead of looking at the two continuums they start to move towards six then they start to look at sports coaching and how they can teach and deliver sports skills um, so it's about applying those skill continuums that are mentioned to the practice methods and the practice types as the students move through year 12 and start to move in towards year 13, we start to look at information processing in sport. So the use of um, the decision making process and the memory models comes in there. We start to look at feedback and kinesthesis and proprioception, for example. And then as we move into year, year 13, the sports psychology really comes in. So we start to look at different elements of sports psychology, like confidence. Uh, and aggression for example and we look at how confidence can be increased or aggressive acts for example can be, be reduced through cognitive and somatic anxiety management control methods. As the students move into year 13 they study the final theory module called socio-cultural studies 
this content um, again is really wide ranging and it gives the students a good grounding um, in a wide variety of sporting issues from from contemporary society really we start off though by looking at some history of sport and we study the U UK we look at sport in the 1800s right the way through to present day from there then the modern Olympic Games is studied and in particular we look at the political implications um, of hosting the Olympics Hitler's 1936 Olympics might be an example there um, deviance in sport is another big section here where we look at performance enhancing drugs, violence in sport, gambling is a new thing that we have to look at now and study. And then the, the students start to look at the media and commercialisation and this concept of the globalisation of sport due to the free uh, movement of people, for example. They finish off that module by studying the pathways to elite success in sport through UK sport. Um, the UK, United Kingdom Sports Institutes and also some of the top universities and then we finish off by looking at modern technology. I mentioned at the start of the screencast about the practical speech that comes in the the, the EPIT basically the practical element of the course. Um, so usually this is done at um, moderation day at Cockermouth School but because of Covid at the moment it's being done more by video and remember what the students need to do is they get a chance to watch a live performance of somebody in their sport and they make some notes on them for about 10 minutes and then they have to talk for about 15 to 20 minutes about the strengths and weaknesses of that performer um, they have to come up with a viable action plan to improve a couple of the major weaknesses and all the way through it they need to start applying some of the fear that they've learned from the three different modules I've been discussing with you today. It's quite a difficult task. Um, the, the students do find it quite difficult actually, but it's a really good task and it's a really um, good way of applying and um, you know ap applying a lot of the examples um, that they learn to actual practical performances. So it's it's a worthwhile task, although it is a difficult one. In terms of the practical activities that I mentioned at the start of the screencast. As I said, you just need to be assessed in one now rather than the GCSE of three. So um, up on the PowerPoint, I've obviously got the, the list of activities that you can be assessed in. These are the only activities that can be assessed. And at A level, we ask the students to provide video evidence of them participating in these activities. If they're playing competitively, then that essentially leads to a better mark. If they're playing county standard or national standard, again, the mark schemes take that into account and essentially they get a better mark. They are, are also asked to keep a bit of a competition log throughout the season of their performances. So what are the, ve the benefits of studying A-level PE? Well, it's an interesting course with a wide variety of learning experiences. Often the students are doing other A-levels, which might involve them sitting down quite a lot of the time. We'd like to think that we get them out off their chairs, moving around as much as possible, even when we're teaching the theory elements of the course. There's certainly a lot of transferable skills in A-level PE, obviously decision making, uh, the independent thinking, the problem solving, the analytical skills that the students need to use under pressure, for example, in the speech. Um, and it really opens up a wide range of possibilities for further study and careers associated within the subject. So where can it take students after they finish the course? Well, lots obviously choose to go on to university. Um, sports science, sports studies, exercise physiology are all really, really popular courses that you know a lot of our students go on to study. But as well as that, a-level P can really help if you're going to move into biology or human biology, physics with the biomechanics element, um, psychology or sports psychology, obviously, with that psychological studies module too. Um, there's a really wide range of career opportunities, including sports development, sports coaching, physiotherapy, personal trainer, um, who, who knows, even being as crazy enough to become a new P teacher. Um, but again, the skills that you learn at A-level P are so transferable um, because of those decision making, those independent thinking skills, that it's a really, really good course for students to take. So one thing that's maybe worth mentioning as well is the historical data. Um, 
the PE department are really, really proud of our outstanding success achieved at A-Level a level over the past few years. Um, our results are consistently good and outstanding and we have been placed in the top 25% of schools for teaching A level consistently over the last few years. Lots and lots of our students get A's and B's which we're really really proud of and there's obviously a lot of them who are now studying or working in the world of sport or associated um, vocations. It's a brilliant course to do um, if there's any more questions about it, please feel free to email me at school. Um, we'd hope to see your son or daughter sitting in D16 next year in September, really enjoying the course and, and getting the most out of it as they move through it. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye.